All right, this is just uh, what I found about the Dally BMS. I just picked a couple of these up. This one is the 485, so you can hook it up to your computer. And it's the 100 amp, 12 volt version. Um, I have it hooked up right now. I've already tested it on some 280 milliamp hour batteries. Right now it's on um, some series 100 amp batteries, 100 amp hour batteries. And uh, I couldn't figure out how to set it up to my computer, so I want to maybe take a little headache from uh, some other people um, and figuring it out. So, what I anyway, here's the program. There's the PC Master. You'll see it's the red one. It says application. You open it up, run it. And you have the screen, the regular layout. It has your volts, current, state of charge, and everything else. Well, I couldn't get it to start working once I plugged it in. So I'll show you what I did. You'll see, here's a comm set. You click on it, you get this screen, and here's your port. Well, once you have this up and you plug in the USB, You will see I only have COM3 and that's all that pops up. You have to refresh the port so it actually sees it. Now I have port 8. Click on COM8 here and then open up the port. And you'll see up at the top right up here the COM set will go from orange once you open it to green. Now it's communicating. I had a bit of an issue. I couldn't get it to find it. I didn't realize you had to have it look again once you plug it in. It was a bit frustrating. But now I have, you'll see each battery is at 3.326 or somewhere thereabouts. State of charge, we have 52%. Um, it shows you your amp draw, which is currently at zero. Now the other thing I ran into is I charged up the batteries. I have this setup that I put in my RV. Charged up the batteries and I cranked up the charger. It's a 75 amp charger and I didn't realize that this 100 amp BMS will only go to a 50 amp charge and then it'll cut off. So my first start in charging it it immediately after 30 seconds kicked off. Once it kicked off, I had to jump start the BMS by putting a battery that was more voltage than the BMS itself to jump start it. And that's initially how I got the thing to start working too, just in case people are curious. You cannot get it to start working unless you jump start it. And that's by, with a um, the P negative, you connect the P negative to a negative of a higher source and, and or a negative and a, a positive of a higher source and it'll kick on. The other thing I had an issue with, I could not get this thing to connect when I first set it up. One of the other things I went crazy with is it just would not communicate no matter what I did. And so I said the heck with it and I started testing the BMS itself on a load and once I tested it on a load there's a little red light you'll see down in here you'll see that light up once I tested it on a load that little red light lights up and then the COM port was actually opened the COM port would not open unless there was a load on it just so you know um, I was just racking my brain trying to figure out why the heck everything wouldn't work so once you jump start it, you have to put a load on it. If that red light doesn't come on right away, you have to put a load on it. Once you put a load on it, it opens up the uh, 485, the RS-485 port that goes into your computer. And it might work the same way in Wi-Fi also. I don't know. I don't have the Wi-Fi version, which I will be getting. Um, but it would not communicate. So 
instead of going nuts, I figured I'd post this so other people don't have the same problem I had. Um, the other thing is, I went camping and it was very cold. And the BMS actually cut off because the cutoff for uh, temperature. Um, so I just did a couple tests here also, just so you get an idea. I ha I, it says, uh, I don't know, 20 degrees Celsius or so to, I think it's 80 are the cutoffs. Well, I just made it cut off with 80 degrees Celsius just by putting the heat gun on it. So I ran the heat gun and it, it cut off. Um, and also, um, the way it came back on was it let it set. Once it hit a certain temperature, power came back on in the BMS. Um, unlike when you hit low voltage on the BMS, you do not get power back unless um, you bring the voltage up to a certain voltage, just so you know. So I've just been playing around with this stuff. Um, I have it on a PowerTech on inverter here. This is just a 2000 watt. I have a 3000 watt in the uh, trailer. Uh, but so far, everything's been working pretty good. Um, I have more batteries, more batteries to come. Just, you know, one of those things you just like uh, testing stuff. Um, and here's how the screen works. I know I should be running it through a recording through the computer itself. But you get an idea. So I'll run the heater. And you'll see it takes a second to respond to amperage. And once it does, uh, there's probably like a two or three second delay. You'll see I'm pulling 60 amps right now. Um, I'll kick it up higher. Now I'm pulling 128 amps. And this thing just keeps trucking. It's supposed to be 100 amp. It's 100 amp, but yeah, it lets me pull 130 amps out of it continuous, which is kind of weird for a, out of a 100 amp. So anyway, um, just a couple things to be aware of, and that's charge rate. If you're gonna charge over 50 amps, you're gonna need something bigger than this 100 amp BMS. You'll need the, I think the 120 goes up a little higher. Maybe it's the 150, I don't know. Um, but you will need a bigger BMS or run a couple in parallel, which I'm gonna do, so it's not the biggest deal to me. It was just kind of frustrating finding out. I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't see on the paper that the charge current was a max of 50 amps or I would have went to the next version to start with. Um, but seeing that I'm going to run a couple of these in parallel, it doesn't matter. Just uh, a heads up to other people buying the stuff though, just so you don't have to buy it twice. You might want to go to the bigger BMS if you have anything charging higher um, than 50 amps. Uh, so far, it's all working good. And hopefully this helps somebody out because it was a bit frustrating to get this program working thinking there's something wrong with my computer, it couldn't see it. Um, and then with the cutout with the uh, charge and whatnot. So uh, hopefully this helps somebody out a little bit. Um, and this, uh, this heat gun is 1500 watts. And it just trucks along at about 130 amps uh, draw on the batteries. And the batteries are just working great with it. Um, and the BMS is holding, for some reason, it's a holding 130 amps. So if you don't need much more draw than about 1500, 1200, right around there, uh, watts, one BMS is fine. I would say if you have much more, you're going to need something bigger. Um, the same thing with inverters. I wouldn't do any kind of steady draw over about 1500 watts for a 2000 watt inverter. Although this inverter did not get warm after running it for a while in 1500 watts, I actually made the fans come on, the inverter, by heating it up with a heat gun after a while, and finally the fan came on. Um, but it's been neat figuring it out uh, a bit 
of a pain with a BMS, but it's all been neat. So hopefully this saves somebody uh, a little trouble. And um, good luck with your setups. Uh, at some point I will show what I have in the trailer um, in case anybody wanted to do something similar.